Now the calls for caution are growing louder. Now two of the biggest money managers of a message for investors. PIMCO says elevated prices leave little room for error. T. Rowe Price echoed that view on prices as it cut its allocation in stocks to the lowest level since 2000. The firm joined a chorus of warnings from the biggest names in investing, including billionaire Howard Marks of Oak Tree. When behavior is risky and prices are high and the market has been doing well for a long time, it's time to be shifting your portfolio in the direction of caution. Joining us now is David Bonson. He's founder and chief investment officer of the Bonson Group, a private wealth management boutique. Over $1 billion in client assets. David, great to have you on the show. Great to be here. I feel like we're desperately seeking a reason to, to sell off here, but do you agree now is the time perhaps to, to adjust risk and pair back a bit? I, I think that it's um, a great time to adjust for risk levels where they ought to be. I don't think that there's a particular catalyst right here that warrants a drastic movement, but I think it's a good time for investors to consider their risk levels where they want them to be and perhaps find that right balance if they maybe are off target a bit. What's the right allocation model right now? How much do you want to be in U.S. equities versus Europe versus the emerging markets? And how much do you want to be in credit? Well, for on the equity side first, we're a little bit out of consensus on this. We actually are a 0% weighting in Europe and Japan. So oh. the international developed, we believe that there's ample room for those stocks to go higher, but not in any scenario that would leave U.S. or emerging markets behind. So we think we can get the same equity position and forward movement without the same degree of systemic risk. On the emerging market side, we can have a lower position and get a higher growth move with a much more attractive valuation. Uh, we don't see EM as a currency play. We think there's some tremendous value in what is happening on a bottom-up basis in a lot of emerging markets. That's our perspective. So talk to me about the systemic risk then that you still see in Europe and what you're saying is, look, we can get the bang for the buck in U.S. equities, for example, equally as we can, we can see Europe. And yet there's so many voices out there that say on a valuation basis, Europe's the place to be. And, and their argument all comes down to one basic uh, line of reasoning, and that is that uh, the U.S. equities have moved so much and European equities yeah. have so much more to move to catch up. That presupposes that they need to go end up at the same place. They don't, and in fact, they won't. <laughs> the reason is that Europe still has to do something the U.S. already did, significant deleveraging. Their sovereign sector has been re-leveraging, which is why they have actually been able to kind of live to fight another day. Um, but in fact, what we know is that they now face an inevitable need to un-QE what Draghi's been doing, and they have not solved for any of the real factors from Italy, Spain in particular. France concerns us a little. But we think there's a systemic debt risk. We don't know how far out it is. They've kicked the can very well so far. But to us, it's just top down. Why go there when we think there's a lot of bottom up stories elsewhere? So you're saying there's too much exuberance at this point, perhaps in Europe? I think so. Talk to me about currencies then and what impact that's going to have. Because what we've seen in this last earnings season is dollar weakness kicking in. We've seen a euro strength impacting some of the earnings that we've seen from, from the European names as well. So when you're talking about investing in US assets overall, where do you see the dollar going? Um, I actually think it will probably weaken a bit further from here. I'm not sure that that ties into our investment thesis much, and I'll tell you why. Um, we can go through any number of periods and explain where a strong dollar has helped drive earnings, and we can look at uh, periods where a strong dollar has hurt earnings. Uh -huh. In the very short term, I understand it is an impact. Right now, particularly multinationals, it's helped in 2017. It hurt quite a bit in 2015 on a quarter-by-quarter -quarter basis. That's not what we're here to do. We're here to find growing free cash flows that are growing the dividends they're paying to our clients, things of that nature. That's what we believe in is bottom-up value investors. Currency is not a part of that. So you don't even hedge it. You're just saying that Absolutely actually not. you just don't care in a way. Well, not, it's not that we don't care. We're aware of it, and we think it needs to inform short-term expectations, but we don't think it's worth investing around. Mm -hmm. And certainly, if we were going to take European exposure, there's no way we'd be hedging that currency out. Mm -hmm. I want to bring up a chart here to ask you about your comfort level with uh, to, to the extent to which companies are raising money through selling debt. This is from Tracy Alloway. And what it shows is investors are allocating more of their portfolio to corporate bonds. Right now it's at about 37%. Yields are low, spreads are narrow, so companies are taking advantage of this moment. Is that a good thing for investors? It's a good thing for companies. Sure. 
investors? Um, it's a good thing until it isn't, and that's a really tough answer, but it's the right one. Um, unfortunately, we know exactly why they're doing it. It's a yield reach, mm -hmm. and it isn't even much of a yield reach, by the way. When you're talking investment-grade corporates, they're picking up very little basis points. They're not being compensated for the risk, but to the extent they don't see any risk in it, and it's some little reach higher in yield, that's why people are doing it, particularly on the short end of the curve, by the way. Short-term investment-grade corporates are very bid up right now. So I don't think it's a good thing in the sense that generally it becomes too euphoric and it doesn't end well. Yeah, there's a lot of um, comparison charts out there, but Morgan Stanley, the latest this morning, looking at European high yield and saying, look, you can't have European yields this tight when 10-year bond yields are trading where they are and they're yeah. bang in line effectively by, uh, by some metrics. Uh, do you think that has potential to shake the market if we see some kind of spillover because it kind of there's two aspects here that more and more money is being allocated to uh, bonds overall whether it's sovereigns or whether it's corporates but at the same time even at the lower quality end spreads are incredibly tight. I would actually say especially at the lower quality end. I mean here in the U.S. we're looking at about 350 wide in the spreads, 350 basis points. It's not quite the 250 we saw in 2007, yeah. but on the um, double B's, the higher quality of the high yield, they're tighter now than they were pre prior to the financial crisis. So I certainly think investors it, it indicate, I don't think it's a cause of a problem to come, I think it indicates a problem to come. <laughs> Complacency overall apathy but where there's a lot of other factors that don't reflect it high yield bond spreads do yeah are you gonna take part in the Tesla bond sale absolutely not <laughs> absolutely not if we want exposure to Tesla you can drive by the equity but um, I, I do think it's the right thing for them to do I think it's a great capitalization move for them to add to their cap stack some high yield uh, 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 debt but no we wouldn't be buying it because the, the yield we're talking about here is five and a quarter saying simply not enough pick up there. I think, I think as a general rule, if we believe in a company that uh, loses about a billion dollars a quarter of cash flow, I would probably have to believe in it enough to buy the equity, not the debt. <laughs> well said. <Good> <laughs> David Bonson, founder and chief investment officer of the Bonson Group. Thank you so much. Thanks.